Kendrick, there is actually someone getting not nearly as much attention that's secretly the mastermind behind all of this. Oh, now, we all know Drake oh Metro recently released his diss track called Push Ups, where he dissed multiple rappers, including Kendrick Lamar, Rick Ross, Future, Metro Boomin, The Weeknd, J. Cole. Oh, there's somebody else is a pusher and potentially subliminals across the entire industry and firstly you know i'm always going to look at this from a business perspective and all of you have to keep in mind that music is a business i believe that everyone involved in this beef knows that it is good for hip-hop it's interesting and entertaining all of these artists yes include it's like drama on like a tv show it's like good you know obviously Including Drake, their sales numbers are down. Hip hop sales numbers across the entire genre are down. Now I'm not saying that this is pre-planned and they're all secretly working together behind the scenes saying, oh, I'm gonna say this, then you say that. No, it's not orchestrated like that, but all of them will make money and will benefit if their names are being dragged into this beef. They can release a single, they can release an album where they may or may not, what's up homie, how's it going? Or may not respond and then the fans are gonna tune in leading to more streams and more sales. Beef has always been good for hip-hop it makes money you get what i'm saying now in the track push-ups drake definitely threw some nice little jabs at kendrick he made fun of his shoe size he called him a pipsqueak he says he's being extorted by his label saying he is just yeah dude if that's true they're taking 50 percent of fucking kendrick's profits that's in fucking same any primes any gifters just as much of a sellout rapper turned pop star as any other rapper who did pop records for money. And yeah, some good solid jabs. Cool. But there was one bar that is massively overlooked. Hugs and kisses, man. Don't tell me about no switches. I'll be rocking every chain I own next visit. I be with some bodyguards like Whitney. Top say drop your little... All right. All right. All right. <laughs> In Kendrick's track, he said, y'all better get the switches and that he's going to be snatching chains, to which Drake says, no, you're not. But the I be with bodyguards line like Whitney, it does obviously refer to Whitney Houston's 1992 film Bodyguards, Ooh. but Whitney is also the name of Kendrick Lamar's fiance. Drake what? dragging Kendrick's fiance's name into this beef is... Oh, shit! huge in my opinion and i think this is really where the beef is going to start you have to remember that everything up until this point has pretty much just been about numbers who has the most sales who's the most relevant who has the most cultural dominance who's big three it's just been strictly competitive until now i mean even if you think dude i i would not want to go at kendrick like this okay me personally, I would not want to do that. I wouldn't want to do that. Can I ruin my dog? Will it hurt me if I don't wake up early enough to take him on his morning walk and give a star of sleep extra? Well, appreciate you. Chris, do you know anything about that shit? About what shit? What's good? How about you? Also, so um, Amazon Fire boat my man and I, after all that trouble they gave us, they let us go. Yo, fuck that shit. Collect unemployment. Employment. Fuck those motherfuckers. Think back all the way to Kendrick's control. I'm so sorry, by the way, but none of that happened to you. Verse where he dissed every relevant rapper in the game, including Drake. He said he had love for everybody, but he wanted to murder them and take... Wait, who did this? Fuck, dude. Well, now, I mean, even if you think back all the way to Kendrick's control verse where he oh. dissed every relevant rapper in the game, including... Man Cole, Big Care, T, Whale, Pusha T, Meek Mills, ASAP Rockies, Drake, Big Sean, J Electric, Tyler, Mac Miller. Drake. He okay. said he had love for everybody, but he wanted to murder them and take their fans. But this was just for the sake of competition, which we all agree is good for hip hop. And even Kendrick's shots that he took on like that were pretty light and also... Drake only acting like this because his cocky boing boing video got leaked. <laughs> nah, that's crazy. Strictly competitive. So Drake bringing up Kendrick's fiance, his family, is even a line that he thinks is taking it too far. Well, it wasn't even about battle rap or any of that. It was just the, the, the information was too shocking. It was, like I said, it was, it was a, on his part, it was a genius chess move. He obviously has no, like, you know, when it comes to me, he's not going to have any, like, morals or respect. So the other elements of the record, um, whether it be, like, just, like, the shit that he's making up about like, my mom and my dad and all this, like, dumb mm -hmm. shit. Or, uh, or, you know, obviously the part that, that hit me the most, which is, like, you know, wishing, like, that my friend that has an illness, like, dies. Like, though, that shit to me is just not really wavy. Like, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm just not really with that. Like, 
and already applied i see as well as applied for like 20 jobs oh nice when i did say oh there's rules to this i didn't mean there's rules that anybody has to follow whether whether there was information i didn't get revealed or not the point is like I, there's just some unwritten rules in the sport for some people obviously yeah. not for him and that's fine you know there's a point where you're gonna want to stop rapping. I'm sure I could say something about, you know, your lovely lady or, you know, a child or a family member, and you're just gonna want to not really rap anymore. Yeah. So when Pusha T brought up Drake's family, his child, and his friend 40, who was unwell, Drake said that was to f make cocky go boing boing. It's funny, dude, okay? That's fucking hilarious. If you catch me high and you go, <laughs> that make my cocky one boing boing, <laughs> literally have trouble breathing i'm gonna be laughing so hard far he also admits that's how pusha won so wouldn't mentioning kendrick's wife by drake's own definition be too far it would which is why i think drake is being fully intentional here and he wants to poke the bear and see what kendrick is gonna do which in my opinion is really where the beef starts it starts at the mention of kendrick's fiance and things could get ugly from here like if kendrick responds to that line directly he might start wiling out exposing personal i did not see that when Drake had floating sperm. I did not know. Information. Again, I don't think they're going to be sliding on each other's blocks, but I don't know. It could, it could get a little messy. But if Kendrick ignores that line, then everyone can just kind of play it off and say, oh, that that Drake was never talking about his wife. That, that line was about hit Whitney Houston. It was just about bodyguards. Eh, whatever. Forget about it. So... It's definitely a strategic I need the Max Ween. chess move by Drake. But ironically... Yeah, I never watched Degrassi back in the day, so I wouldn't know about that. It's crazy, though, that he was on Degrassi. The most overlooked mastermind in this entire beef is Metro Boomin. I believe he has oh. the biggest role in this situation, but he isn't... I called it. ...isn't really getting the attention because he's not a rapper and he can't technically respond the only line metro received in push-ups was metro shut your hoe ass up and make some drums but it's actually <laughs> much deeper than that it starts with metro's tweet and delete rant about Ooh, dude metro's deleted tweets are fucking insane bro there's like one where he's like yeah bro i love that new j cole bro i put that on that shit put me to sleep <laughs> Whenever I can't sleep, I'll put that new Jermaine on. That should put me right to sleep or some shit. And then there's one where he's calling... I think he called J. Cole the F-slur. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. I literally saved it because I was like, there's no fucking way. I was like, yeah, Jake will appreciate this. Drake cool? <laughs> it's, he says Drake cool, but he be acting like a F-slur sometimes. <laughs> That was from January 2011. Oh my god. Pink. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to say their name. Yo, that's crazy. Drake. The hip hop all day Twitter account was comparing the streams of Drake's Her Loss and Metro Boomin's Heroes and Villains. Her Loss oh. is about 1.3 billion streams behind. Heroes and Villains currently getting 10 million streams a day. Her loss, 4 million. The gap is only going to widen. That's then Metro crazy. Boomin chimed into the conversation and said, Yet her loss still keeps winning rap album of the year over heroes and villains. Proof that award shows are just politics and not for me. I don't care about- Yeah, I mean that is real. A lot of- A lot of award shows are literally just about politics shit. A lot of the music shit is just about politics shit. Like, not actual political shit, but like the politics of the scene and the music. Yo, what's up, Link? Welcome in. You're fine. Happy EP time summer. My lap is always open for... Oh, is summer... Yo. Oh, 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 okay, okay. ...about awards, honestly. The true award and reward is knowing that the music I spend so much time on brings joy to the people's everyday lives. Oh, wait, that's actually wholesome as fuck. Wait, what the hell? What the hell, Metro? Yo. What's so funny about these tweets is that Metro is doing the exact same thing that DJ Khaled was doing against Tyler the Creator. Tyler went number one, DJ Khaled went number two, and DJ Khaled was pissed. And everybody was like, shut up DJ Khaled. You had everybody in the industry on that album, and you still couldn't compete with Tyler. But DJ Khaled based his argument off stream, saying, I make albums so people can play it, and you actually hear it. It's called albums that you actually hear the songs. Not no mysterious shit. You never hear it. Like, dude. Wait. 
Bro, what the hell? Not my pookie wookie Tyler. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. No, Chrissy, we're role playing. Oh, my bad. Here we gotta go wake my man up. It's been a long day. Oh, we went down around 2 p.m. today. We had stayed up all night. Oh, shit. Sounds good, Minna. Wait. Wait, this might be really stupid. DJ Khaled. Okay, so he's a producer. He's actually a producer. Is he like Metro? Does he cut the beats himself or nah? Also, he's almost 50. Jesus fucking Christ. No? Oh, okay. I was about to say, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. Am I stupid? Dude, shut up. Igor was just a great album. That's it. Yeah, bro. Igor's amazing. Yeah, I, yeah, that shit was... It, it, you just got cooked by fucking uh, Tyler. GG's. Metro is kind of doing the same thing here. He's mad about an award, not necessarily going number one. But Metro is an executive producer. DJ Khaled is an executive producer. The only difference is that Metro does have the capability and the ability to make amazing music himself and actually do the producing. And he didn't make some annoying video to post on social mm -hmm. media, but I mean, Dante, you gotta back me up here. Like, he's clearly pressed. Like, he said, I don't even care about awards. Then why did you tweet about it, bro? You care. But then he deleted the tweet, so I guess that proves he doesn't care. And then Drake, a few months later, called him a tweet and deleter. The non-believers, the underachievers, the Tweet and deleters, you guys make me sick to my stomachs, fam. Honestly, if you guys want to look in my eyes, you guys want to do something? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You guys, that's what I thought. The bot is still broken. So hear me out. Metro believes in his heart. Her loss robbed him of an opportunity to win. Not the Anita Max win setting, no. A BET award or a Grammy or some other award. So it makes sense why he would drop another <laughs> album that's not necessarily rushed, but I mean, Heroes and Villains dropped like 14 15 months ago and he already had bro that shit's so good oh my fucking god as we don't trust you this year especially considering drake said he won't be dropping any more music this year maybe maybe metro is trying to drop an album and get the award that he thinks he deserves which would be so funny if drake just said nah fuck it i'm gonna do a surprise album <laughs> And he drops an album that gets an award over me. Have I ever cried to a song? Oh, yeah, dude. Like, probably, like, 20, 30, maybe 40 songs. Yeah. True again, that would be diabolical. Okay, if... Drake drops another album this year, I think he watched this video. Because the ultimate troll to Metro would be to drop another album and intercept Metro's ability to get some award or get a Grammy or something like that. Yeah, but like Cole's gonna drop. Well, I guess Cole doesn't really win anything like that usually. That would be... For whatever reason, by the way, Cole deserves to win fucking awards and shit. Crazy. But additionally, it was on We Don't Trust You that Future took shots at Drake. He said on track number one, you my number one fan, dog. Sneak dissing, I don't understand. Pillow talking, acting like a fed. I don't need another fake friend. Can't be bout a hoe cause we sharing. In your feelings, why you playing, dog? I know, I, I didn't rap it, all right? I didn't rap it. And the only reason we knew this was a diss at Drake was because Drake's opening line in push-ups was, I could never be nobody's number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. Which is true, I mean, Surprisingly, Future had like seven or eight number one albums, but he never had a number one single until he collaborated with Drake. I think it was way too sexy, which is like Future deserved so many other number ones other than that. But regardless, that is very true. Again, I said this uh, watching the Fantano video the other day. Um, I used to be like, oh, like, oh, conscious rap, whatever bullshit. And I was like, fuck Future. Future really, like, he made his own sound. He innovated a lot. He's really, like, he does deserve his flowers. You know? Chris, people were asking why DJ Cal doesn't lose weight. His response, I don't lose. This, it is true. That's but wild. there really isn't that much history. That's real, though. Me for real. History of beef between Future and Drake. Like, they're kind of friends, as far as we know. I mean, bloggers and YouTubers are now diving into the history and looking at all of these subliminal shots that may or may not be Drake! between these two. And there could be something there, but the only likely explanation that makes any sense is over a girl. And it's a really long story that's not worth getting into all of the details, in my oh, opinion. Oh, come on. Can we get a summarized one, though, Pat? But 
The spark notes is essentially oh. that Drake and Future allegedly have some beef over this girl who goes by the name Princess Diana. But then again, oh, shit. Princess Diana again, back at it again. Future just said that the beef can't be about a hoe because they're sharing, which does prove that they have shared women in the past, oh. but it doesn't really seem that strong. So Metro is... I mean, you know, Drake and Future, they just like Jack Doherty and what's his name, the fucking, fucking sexual assaulter. You know, they share underwear so they can share women, you know? Come on. This is obviously a joke, by the way, okay? It's clearly mad at Drake, and Future might be lightly agitated, or maybe Future is not particularly happy with the way that Drake and Metro's relationship has sort of panned out, so it's time to take sides. Is Future gonna side with Metro or Drake? But you have to consider Metro's role here. He's an amazing producer. Some might even call him the best in hip-hop. You can work with a great producer for your whole career. They share panties, so they share hoes. Easy. But you can't really have a partnership, unless you're a duo, with another rapper. Like, if you're on Drake's side, what do you get? Okay, you get a feature, and you get kind of the cultural relevance by being beside him. Bring back DJ Khaled, I'm edging right now, please? Holy fuck. Nah, this guy's brain broke, and he watches Aiden Ross. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry, Speedy Roblox. Thank you for that clip, though. Appreciate you. Him, you might get a an Instagram tag, or maybe you get a whole collab album. Future has all of that already from Drake. He got all of the <laughs> benefits that you get from being Drake's friend in the industry. So, kind of doesn't really need him anymore. Strategically, siding with Metro is better for the long term. Plus, who knows how close Drake and Future actually are as friends behind the scenes? Maybe if how about you we don't side with anyone. Uh, is that good for rap and hip hop drama? Uh, I don't think so. So, <laughs> liberal. Baby Gronk breaks up with Livy Dunk. <laughs> Baby Gronk Riz Livy Dunn Ohio. Future was always using him for sales. But Future and Metro do have a long history together and they are from the same city. For Kendrick, the decision was easy. It was just let me jump on the number one producer's album and take a shot at the biggest rapper in the game. But Metro benefited heavily from both of these situations. Then add The Weeknd into the mix and Metro yet again benefited from that too. The Weeknd received some bars on push-ups as well. Firstly, Drake said that The Weeknd claims Toronto, but he isn't actually from there. Then he basically makes fun of The Weeknd's manager for paying Metro to put him on his most recent two albums. Liberal wants peace in the rap world? Albums, which as you know, The Weeknd does kind of stand out on Heroes and Villains and We Don't Trust You. It's like, all right, The Weeknd's a singer. He's not really a rapper. Like... He's kind of like the token singer on this projects, on these projects. But again, why would The Weeknd need to be on Metro's album? Well, you guys have to think with your business brain. Sure, The Weeknd is a pop star, but he still needs that hip hop coolness factor. He needs oh, okay. the approval of the hip hop community to remain on top, even as a pop star. It's just a strategic marketing and branding decision. Like rappers just kind of have this cool factor that's Difficult to explain. They usually have the most poppin' Instagrams. They dress the nicest. They just have this cool aura or looming interest around them that people, our society are- Oh my god, pray for me. Oh my fucking god, dude. That song is so good. Or pop culture interest has just kind of given them. Why do you think Post Malone started with rap and then now drifted into pop and country? Why do you think Morgan Wallen wanted to collaborate with Lil Durk? Why do you think that pop stars want rappers to feature on their- Yeah, what's your question, Speedy Roblox? I'm all yours, brother. Songs, well, because they get this strong cultural cosign that is hard to quantify with dollars, but we all know that it exists. It's invaluable. You can say something right right here. Yes, yes, you can. Valuable. And The Weeknd knows that he needs to maintain that. And how do you maintain that? Well, you get featured on Metro's album where the whole hip hop community is going to be tapping in to see who's featured on said album. The Weeknd chose to side with Metro because Metro will keep The Weeknd collaborating with the biggest rappers in the game and keep him relevant and cool. And Drake knows this. That's why he dissed him. As far as the Rick Ross beef, it just kind of strategically fit into Drake's diss. Drake just said, fuck it, I'm taking on everyone. Drake said throughout push-ups, the theme of this track is that rappers need him for features, they need him for relevance, they need him to get their number one song. Is, is my boy Pat really not going to mention ASAP? And Rick Ross kind of fits in that boat. All of Rick Ross's top hits have Drake featured on them, but it seems like most of their actual beef history is over women.
again. Because it's likely that any woman that Rick Ross can get, Drake could probably take. Drake invited Rick Ross's ex to his concert after he unfollowed him. From him. And Ross responded oh. quickly on Instagram because he really doesn't have anything. I'm not going to lie. Drake looks like a Wii Walmart Wii character. <laughs> nah, that's goofy. To lose. He started making fun of his nose and... Drake loves taking on everyone in the bedroom. Uh, mentioned his mother and said that he has a BBL. <laughs> He's calling him BBL Drake. Yeah, BBL Drake again. Waking up to seeing BBL Drake trending on Twitter was wild. Cupcake Drake. I feel like Drake knew that Rick Ross was an easy W. Like, no matter what Rick Ross says, nobody's going to take his side because he's old. He's almost 50 years old. So we all in all, know, Summer. What do you think? Do you think it's possible that Metro could be the secret ringleader behind all of this, or do you think I have it wrong? Uh, no, I 100% agree. No. Uh, I 100% agree that uh, fucking... Metro literally was just like, oh, damn, yeah, we finna get this shit popping, popping. Yeah. We finna get this shit popping, popping, okay? Enough of this fucking slow, boring shit. Fucking Drake a bitch. I'm gonna fucking let him know, okay? Hey, don't talk to Summer like that, Chris. Fucking liberal. Listen, I just said we know you like oranges. We know. You are my ding dong. My only ding dong. Drizzy Glizzy Drake. Yeah, dude, closing thoughts. Uh, yeah, yeah, Metro is 100% the ringleader of this, the, all these shits, dude, okay? Imagine if Kendrick's response is pro produced by Metro without any drums. Cole realized that these dudes really hate each other, and he wants none of it. Yeah, I feel like Cole really just is like, yeah, I don't really hate anyone here or am mad at anyone, so... Drake asking the camera if it wants to do something is the most Drake clip of this beef. Let's remember what happened last time Drake name dropped someone's fiance. Was that the pusha? No one knows that if Patrick released a diss, it could kill all five of their careers. <laughs> Patrick got Drake wiped down. Yo, what? Felt relevant to say, oh, real, real. After the Kendrick fiance diss, I can't even jokingly side LMAO. Yeah. Dude, holy shit, bro. But yeah, that's 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 about it. I don't have anything else to say. Shout out Patrick, Pat CC.